Week 9, Problem 6. A wind microhenry inductor is connected in series with a variable capacitor in the tuning section of a shortwave radio set. Okay. What capacitance, hmm, maybe which capacitance? Hmm. What capacitance tunes the circuit to the signal from a transmitter broadcasting at 6 megahertz? Okay, so the idea here is we want to get, I think it's called a natural frequency or natural harmonic. Um, and there's just a formula you can look it up. Um, but in this case, there are some cases in life where a modicum of understanding will pay significant dividends. And I believe this is one of them. So if you look at resistance, I'm going to do a better job than that. If you look at resistance, you can say, like, all right, here is, ooh, where did you come from? There we go. Straight up and down. Nothing exciting. There we go. Eh, it's still kind of crooked. It's okay. Move this guy back just a little bit, maybe. There we go. There we go. All right. So I'm going to say that this is real resistance. This is imaginary reactive resistance. So if you have a whole bunch of resistors and you add them together, you have, oh, resistor 1, resistor 2, 2, resistor 3. Bam. And you can combine them. If you have them in parallel, it's a little bit different. But you, you, you get the general idea. You have a bunch of resistances. You put them next to each other. You add them together. Life goes on. All right. Well, when you start throwing um, inductors and capacitors in the mix, the way you look at them is I'm going to use Z for impedance, which is basically basically resistance. So for a capacitor, I'm going to call it J omega C. And for an inductor, I'm going to call it, it's supposed to be an L, 1 over J omega C. J omega L. This is a C, that's an L. Where J is the imaginary number, I so to speak. And so if you have a resistor R1 and you have a capacitor, I'm going to say ZC, you're going to have a, um, an impedance or resistance that looks like this. And so the actual resistance to flow, the resistance to flow of current is going to be this value, the vector addition of these two. So, and then um, another way to look at uh, an inductor, this guy up here, the penis over an inductor, is multiply the top and bottom by j, the imaginary number. And what happens is you're going to have j on top, and you'll have j squared on bottom, omega l. Well, I squared is just negative, so what you have is negative I, or J, whatever, over omega L on the bottom, where omega is the angular frequency. So what this question is asking is it says we have, so basically this is telling you that you're going to go down with, it, uh, it's going to go down on the y-axis, which happens to be the imaginary axis. So it says you have a one microhenry inductor. So it says that you're going to have an impedance that goes down in this direction. So you're going to have an impedance due to an inductor that goes down this way. And that, no matter what your resistance is, um, have a resistance like this, whatever, that's your, you're going to get a bigger resistance here because you're going to take the magnitude of the vector addition here. So the way you want to get rid of that is you want to add in a capacitor so that you get in exactly the same length magnitude but in the opposite direction. That way when you add in a resistor, the only resistance you have is due to the resistor and not some vector combination of the two. Okay? Not too far off the deep end yet. Just think of this in terms of math. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm gonna look up impedance real quick so you can see that I'm not just bluffing. Impedance, electrical impedance. So 
Electrical impedance is the measure of the opposition a circuit presents to a current when voltage is applied. Bam, you read that and you're like, oh, that's exactly the same as resistance. And it pretty much is what you were taught for resistance. Impedance is just resistance plus, um, uh, I guess it's called reactance. Basically, resistance when you also have inductors and capacitors. And this is a whole bunch, this is just in uh, Euler's notation formula. Bam. And here, uh, uh, impedance due to inductor, J omega L. Oh, did I have it upside down? I had it upside down. I was leading you astray. Leading you astray. I'm going to destroy that for it. Oh, man. Oh, man. That could have been terrible. Terrible. All right. Impedance due to J omega L. Capacitor, 1 over J omega C. Oh man, oh, that could be terrible. So you might be able to think of it as a mnemonic that L is always on the level. So basically it's on the level, straight like that. Maybe it's a mnemonic, I don't know. Don't Do whatever you want, do whatever you want. Just memorize it. Yeah, I would memorize it. It's worth memorizing in life. Okay, so what we want here is we want the uh, reactive resistance, the impedance, reactive impedance to cancel out. We want to have just the right amount of L to cancel out the C. So what we want is ZC plus ZL equals zero. Okay, so this is saying that we have one over J omega C plus J omega L equals zero. So we have, let's see here, one over J omega C equals negative j omega l. Okay, that seems reasonable, got that. So we're gonna multiply these guys across, so we're gonna have negative j squared omega squared lc equals one. So j omega squared, or j squared is gonna be negative one, so it's gonna be omega squared l times c. And this is the, probably the formula that you were given. Um, I like to drive it every time, because there's a certain level of understanding in life that comes with it that I think is worthwhile. Um, and I didn't tell you this yet, but omega is the angular frequency, which is 2 pi times normal frequency. So we're going to have 2 pi f squared lc equals 1. Or, since we have to find the capacitance, I'm going to say that the capacitance equals 1 over L times 2 pi F. I think there should be a squared in there. Squared. Okay. So, putting numbers in here, we have 1 micro Henry. So we're going to have 1 over 1 times 10 to the negative 6 times, I'm just going to do 2 pi they had what? Six megahertz times six times ten to the sixth squared. Okay. Hmm. Probably an easy way to simplify this, but I'm not going to bother. So, one divided by quantity, one times ten to the negative six times quantity 2 times pi. I don't need to capitalize pi. But I'm going to do it anyway. 6 times 10 to the 6 squared. Let's just see if that gives me what I want. Oh, nobody did the funny bracket. All right, 1 over, ah, that is bothering me. I know, it makes no difference. I'm still going to go delete it and redo it. Over. I'm sorry, Wolfram, for making you work extra hard. All right, 2 pi, 6 times 10 to the 6 squared, 1 times 10 to the negative 6, bam. So we get 7 times 10 to the negative 10th. 7 times 10 to the negative 10th. That's crazy small. Crazy small. And that's probably going to be in farads. And they probably want, what, nano farads? Pico farads, okay. Pico. So, 1 farad. That's a farad, and we have a farad is equal to 10 to the 12th picofarads. 
So that's going to cancel. That's going to cancel. That's going to give us 10. So we have 700 picofarads. I used to say that I was so micromanaged that we had pico management, which is kind of like micromanaging, just squared. All right. Yeah, that's all there is to that one. So by put, putting putting in series a capacitor of 700 picofarads, you would tune the shortwave radio set because you would eliminate the reactive resistance. So what you do is instead of having a resistance, let's say the resistor went out to about here, instead of having a resistor resistance that is this big, you'd ha instead have a resistance that's only that big. Um, I think the term for this is power factor because you have an angle here and then cosine of theta equals the power factor. Not important. You might learn about it sometime in life. Maybe so. Either way, just getting in the mindset that inductors and capacitors are just um, imaginary. Imaginary? Uh, you can visualize um, the resistance to current flow with capacitors and inductors by looking at them on the complex plane like this, where for inductors you have J omega L, and for conductors you have 1 over J omega C. Okay, uh, I'll probably write this in just so I feel accomplished. 700 little dashes, got it. All right, that's all there is to problem six. Um, I will see you on 